A massive 6.9 earthquake just rocked Japan's southwestern coast. But could the shockwaves from this powerful event be silently stirring the colossal magma chamber beneath Yellowstone, one of the world's most dangerous supervolcanoes? Despite being over 5,000 miles apart, Earth's tectonic forces are more interconnected than we realize. Could this distant quake be a warning sign of something far more catastrophic brewing beneath the United States? The answer might be more unsettling than you think. On January 13, 2025, at 9.19 p.m. local time, a powerful magnitude 6.9 earthquake shook the Huganada Sea off the coast of Miyazaki Prefecture in southwestern Japan. Thousands of miles away, Yellowstone National Park sits atop one of the most powerful supervolcanoes on Earth, a colossal magma chamber that could reshape the planet if disturbed. But can an earthquake from across the globe trigger unrest deep beneath Yellowstone? In this video, we dive into the science behind long-distance seismic connections and explore whether Japan's earthquake could be sending ripples of danger toward America's volcanic giant. Stay tuned, because what we uncover might change how you think about Earth's hidden forces. Yellowstone is more than just a landscape of geysers, hot springs, and lush forests. Beneath its surface lies a behemoth, one of the most formidable supervolcanoes on the planet. Its heart is a colossal magma chamber stretching roughly 60 kilometers, 37 miles long, and 40 kilometers, 25 miles wide buried beneath 5 to 15 kilometers of solid rock. This massive reservoir is a volatile mix of molten rock, crystallized minerals, and pressurized gases, an immense energy source quietly simmering beneath the Earth's crust. This isn't just any volcano. Yellowstone has erupted with catastrophic force three times in Earth's distant past, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and most recently, 631,000 years ago. Each eruption was a planetary event, blanketing vast swaths of North America in volcanic ash and altering global climates. The magnitude of these eruptions was so immense that entire landscapes were reshaped and ecosystems across continents felt the aftermath. Yet, since that last colossal blast, Yellowstone has slumbered, its energy building slowly over millennia. But Yellowstone is far from dormant. It is a restless giant, its magma chamber constantly fed by a deep mantle plume, a relentless column of scorching molten rock rising from Earth's depths. This mantle hotspot acts like a furnace, melting rock into magma and fueling the supervolcano's potential. Over time, pressure within the chamber rises as gases accumulate and molten rock shifts. The surrounding rock is solid, but it's fractured, like a fragile shell holding back a storm. Seismic activity is Yellowstone's trigger. Earthquakes, even small ones, can act as a key, unlocking the chamber's tightly sealed doors. Tremors can fracture rock, alter pressure dynamics, or create pathways for magma and gas to ascend. In this delicate balance, even distant seismic events raise concern. Could the shockwaves from Japan's earthquake, traveling over 5,000 miles through the Earth, disturb this precarious equilibrium? It may seem improbable, but the Earth functions as a vast, interconnected system where even distant events can have far-reaching consequences. When a powerful earthquake strikes, it releases an immense amount of energy that radiates outward in the form of seismic waves, vibrations that travel through the Earth's layers. These seismic waves act as invisible messengers, carrying the force of the earthquake across continents and oceans, sometimes reaching fragile geological systems thousands of miles away, like Yellowstone's massive magma chamber. Seismic waves are primarily divided into two key types, primary P waves and secondary S waves, each with distinct characteristics and behaviors that determine how they interact with the Earth's interior. P waves are the fastest seismic waves and are the first to be detected after an earthquake. They can travel at speeds ranging from 5 to 13 kilometers per second, 3 to 8 miles per second, depending on the type of material they pass through. 
P waves move in a push-pull motion, compressing and expanding the ground, much like sound waves travel through air. Their ability to move through solids, liquids, and gases makes them incredibly effective at transmitting energy across great distances, even penetrating deep into the Earth's core. In contrast, S waves travel more slowly, typically at speeds of 3 to 7 kilometers per second, 2 to 4 miles per second, and can only move through solid materials. Unlike the compressional movement of P waves, S waves move in a side-to-side -side or up-and-down motion, shearing and twisting the ground as they pass. This shearing motion makes S waves far more destructive at the surface, as they can cause intense ground shaking and structural damage. However, because they cannot travel through liquids, they are stopped by the Earth's outer core, limiting how far they can spread compared to P waves. But the energy released during a powerful earthquake doesn't stop with just P waves and S waves. Other types of waves, such as surface waves, travel along the Earth's outer layers and can produce rolling, wave-like ground movements that are often felt most strongly near the earthquake's epicenter. While surface waves dissipate more quickly over distance, P waves and S waves can maintain their energy and travel vast distances through the Earth's mantle and crust. When these seismic waves encounter a sensitive and volatile structure like Yellowstone's magma chamber, the results, though often subtle, can be significant. The fast-moving P waves arrive first, compressing and relaxing the rock layers surrounding the magma chamber. This rapid compression can momentarily alter the pressure within the chamber, squeezing the molten rock and gases trapped within. Even a slight shift in pressure can influence how magma behaves, potentially causing it to rise or shift within the chamber. Following behind, the slower-moving S waves shear through the solid rock, exerting lateral forces on the crust. This side-to-side -side movement can exacerbate existing fractures or even create new micro-cracks in the brittle rock encasing the magma. These fractures can serve as pathways for gases to escape or for magma to slowly migrate upward. Although these changes are typically too small to trigger immediate volcanic activity, they can incrementally destabilize the chamber, especially if combined with other stressors. The Earth's crust surrounding Yellowstone is already a complex web of faults, fractures, and geothermal conduits. It behaves much like a sealed pressure cooker, where any small disruption in the system could shift the balance. Seismic waves from a distant earthquake act as tiny taps on the lid of this pressure cooker, usually harmless, but under the right conditions, they could jostle the system in subtle but meaningful ways. Moreover, the Yellowstone region is known for its hydrothermal system, where superheated water and steam circulate through underground channels. Seismic waves can disturb this delicate plumbing system, triggering geysers, increasing steam venting, or even causing small-scale hydrothermal explosions. These disruptions may not be volcanic eruptions, but they are visible signs that energy within the system is being redistributed. It's important to understand that while distant earthquakes like Japan's 6.9 event are unlikely to directly trigger a Yellowstone eruption, they can contribute to the ongoing geological processes at play. Over time, repeated seismic disturbances, even minor ones, can influence the internal dynamics of the magma chamber by gradually increasing stress on surrounding rock or facilitating the slow ascent of magma. Earthquakes on the other side of the world are more than isolated events. They are part of a dynamic, interconnected planet where energy moves seamlessly across vast distances. Yellowstone's slumbering supervolcano is not isolated, but is subtly linked to the tectonic dance of the Earth. The relentless march of seismic waves beneath our feet is a powerful reminder that, even from thousands of miles away, the Earth is in constant motion, sometimes stirring giants that have slept for millennia. This possibility is both scientifically fascinating and deeply unsettling. Yellowstone's magma chamber is being closely monitored by an extensive network of seismographs, GPS sensors, and gas emission detectors operated by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. At present, no signs point toward imminent danger. The ground remains stable, 
gas emissions are within normal levels, and the subtle pulse of earthquakes beneath the park remains routine. But history teaches us that supervolcanoes awaken slowly and unpredictably. The 2025 Japan earthquake serves as a stark reminder of how fragile and interconnected our planet truly is. A violent shift beneath the Pacific can send silent ripples toward the heart of North America, stirring forces that have slept for thousands of years. Yellowstone may not be ready to erupt now, but every tremor, near or far, tells a story. A story of pressure building, of ancient forces in motion, and of a world where even distant events can awaken giants. Though it sleeps now, scientists have long studied the unimaginable consequences of what might happen if Yellowstone erupted today. This is not a question of mere curiosity. It is a journey into one of Earth's most extreme hypothetical scenarios, where nature's raw power meets human vulnerability. vulnerability. Beneath the sprawling landscapes of Yellowstone lies a massive magma chamber, stretching over 60 kilometers in length and 40 kilometers in width, filled with molten rock, pressurized gases, and volatile energy, fed by a deep mantle plume rising from Earth's core. If it were to erupt again today, the consequences would be far beyond any disaster humanity has ever faced. The eruption could begin subtly, Perhaps an unusual series of earthquakes would rattle the park, signaling magma rising through fractures in the Earth's crust. Geysers might erupt with unprecedented force, steam vents could roar louder, and the ground might begin to swell as magma pushes upward. Then, without warning, a cataclysmic explosion could rip through the surface. Superheated ash, rock, and gas would blast skyward, piercing the stratosphere with unimaginable force. The eruption column could climb over 30 kilometers, nearly 20 miles, high, dispersing volcanic ash across vast swaths of North America within hours. The immediate fallout would be devastating. Within a 100-mile radius, everything would be obliterated. Forests, rivers, and wildlife would be buried under feet of volcanic ash and pyroclastic flows searing clouds of molten rock and gas moving faster than hurricanes, hotter than any wildfire. Entire communities in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho would vanish in moments, leaving behind a wasteland of ash and rock. But the devastation wouldn't stop there. Ash particles, carried by jet streams, would spread across the United States and beyond. Major cities like Denver, Chicago, and even New York could find themselves under layers of ash, crippling transportation, collapsing power grids, and contaminating water supplies. The fine ash, sharp as glass, would clog engines, damage electronics, and make the air dangerous to breathe. Farming across the Midwest, the heart of America's food supply, would come to a halt as crops suffocated beneath the ash blanket. Globally, the situation would spiral into chaos. The eruption would inject vast quantities of sulfur dioxide and ash into the upper atmosphere, forming reflective sulfate aerosols. These aerosols would block sunlight, causing temperatures worldwide to plummet. This phenomenon, known as a volcanic winter, could lower global temperatures by several degrees Celsius, disrupting weather patterns, shortening growing seasons, and triggering widespread crop failures. Famine could grip vulnerable regions, and even wealthier nations would scramble to secure food and resources. Rainfall patterns would shift unpredictably. Some areas would face devastating droughts, while others would be submerged by relentless floods. Monsoon cycles in Asia could collapse, crippling rice production and threatening the food security of billions. The oceans, too, would suffer as cooler temperatures disrupt currents and marine ecosystems, leading to massive die-offs in fisheries, Economically, the world would stagger under the weight of this disaster. Global markets would crash as supply chains crumble. Trade routes would be disrupted by ash-grounding airplanes and choking transport infrastructure. Countries would enter economic freefall, with industries dependent on agriculture, energy, and manufacturing taking devastating hits. Recovery could take decades. 
the human toll would be immeasurable. Millions could die from the immediate impacts of ash inhalation, infrastructure collapse, and food scarcity. Health systems, already strained by environmental disasters, would buckle under the pressure. Diseases could spread in crowded shelters where survivors seek refuge, and clean water would become as precious as gold. Social order might begin to fracture. Panic, scarcity, and survival instincts could ignite conflicts within and between nations. Mass migrations could overwhelm borders as people flee uninhabitable regions in search of safety. Governments would face impossible decisions, how to allocate dwindling resources, protect vulnerable populations, and maintain civil order in a world plunged into darkness. And yet, the full impact could unfold for years, even decades. Acid rain would poison rivers and lakes. Ecosystems would collapse under the dual pressure of climate change and environmental destruction. Species on the brink of extinction might disappear forever, and human societies would struggle to adapt to a new, harsher reality. But how could this chain of destruction start? The mechanics are terrifyingly simple. Magma, rich in volatile gases, builds pressure beneath Yellowstone. Over thousands of years, this pressure accumulates, slowly fracturing the brittle crust above. If the rock weakens enough, magma could surge upward violently, releasing pent-up gases in an unstoppable explosion. Each step in this process, magma movement, gas buildup, rock fracturing, is monitored today. But even the most advanced science might only offer days or weeks of warning. And if the worst were to happen, we would be powerless to stop it. No technology exists to halt a supervolcano. Efforts to drill into the magma chamber or release pressure artificially remain theoretical and fraught with risks. Humanity could only watch as nature reclaims control. Yet, in this grim scenario, there is also a story of resilience. Science has given us tools to monitor, predict, and prepare. International cooperation could become our greatest strength, sharing resources, stabilizing economies, and supporting displaced populations. The human spirit, tested by adversity throughout history, might rise once again to rebuild. The Yellowstone supervolcano reminds us of Earth's immense power, a force far beyond our control. Its eruption, though unlikely in our lifetime, would be a defining moment in human history. A moment when our species would face the true scale of nature's fury, and be forced to reckon with our place on this ever-changing planet. However, the possibility of a catastrophic Yellowstone supervolcano eruption remains extraordinarily low in the foreseeable future. Geological records show that Yellowstone's last major eruption occurred approximately 640,000 years ago. Current assessments by the United States Geological Survey USGS, estimate the annual likelihood of another massive eruption at a mere 0.000014%, a statistical reassurance that such an event is unlikely to occur within many human lifetimes. Beneath the Yellowstone caldera, the vast magma chamber, formed by past volcanic activity, is closely monitored. Scientific studies reveal that this chamber is only 5 to 15% molten, with the remainder consisting of solidified rock. This limited amount of molten material suggests that the conditions necessary for a colossal, explosive eruption are not currently present. Without sufficient magma buildup, the likelihood of the supervolcano producing a devastating eruption diminishes even further. While Yellowstone remains geologically active, with frequent small earthquakes and geothermal features like geysers and hot springs, these signs are typical of a dynamic volcanic system and not indicators of impending disaster. Ongoing monitoring by scientists worldwide ensures that any significant changes deep beneath the surface will be detected long before they pose a threat. If you found this video fascinating, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world's most intriguing natural phenomena. Stay curious and stay informed. Until next time.